Hi everybody, good morning and welcome to Stormtopia.com. Let's get to the latest on this potential upcoming uh, storm. Alright, uh, let's just go over the forecast for the next couple of days first. Alright, first off, let's take a look at today's forecast. Highs in the 50s, New England, 60s, northern mid-Atlantic in the 60s, and so in the southern mid-Atlantic. Watching Clipper off to the west. Overall, it's going to be a decent day, but thanks to the Clipper, Folks along the Appalachian Mountains finally going to have increasing clouds through the day, and they're going to have uh, some pretty impressive rain by this evening. Tomorrow morning, raining morning. Tomorrow morning, rain, snow showers are going to be clearing out in northern New England. We're going to be wrapping up the day. All right, things getting better as we go throughout the day, and uh, it's going to be feeling very autumnal. Okay, now let's get back to. Um, the storm memo. Alright, a lot of folks have been asking me about the storm. Here's what I have for you right now, and then we can take a look at the guidance. Alright. Lots of things. Not the number, number one point. Alright. Tons of things can change between now and the 28th. Now and the 29th. Tons of things. Alright. Some snow is likely. A historic East Coast snowstorm is not likely. The ensembles are most consistent right now. Um, they've been consistent for the few day for a few days. Teleconnections, we've got a pot we've got a slightly positive North Atlantic oscillation, a rapidly rising Arctic oscillation, slightly negative Pacific North American pattern, and a positive quasi biennial oscillation. Okay. Now most of those things are not working in its favor for it to be a really massive storm. Okay. Let's zoom in. All right. Here is the ensemble means. Here we are on uh, the 26th. Okay, we've got a pretty decent short wave ready to come into the picture. Uh, short wave trough ready to come into the picture. Now, something I gotta concentrate on is that we've got southwest flow at the beginning in the northeast. We're not laying the cold air, except in far northern New England, all right? So there's not cold air at the start. Another thing you need to concentrate on is that the, that's warming up the ground even more. Here's a little... There, at this point, there's a short way sort of traveling along that, along that trough. And um, as we get out into Friday... It's basically pushing through the northeast. There's a short wave coming out through here. There's probably a mix of rain and snow. Let's take, over, let's take a look at some uh, guidance products right now. First, I'll show you the GFS operational and the Canadian operational. This is the GFS, all right? And what we're doing here is uh, by Thursday, we've basically got... Whoa. By Thursday, we've basically got a low pressure system right here. It's raining across southern New England. The cold air is ready to come in and interact with it. And that's exactly what it does. Rain changes to snow across this part of New England. And there's a lot of folks see a couple inches of snow. Is that historic? Not really. Take a look at the Canadian. Alright. This is the CMC model. Much further south, it would be one for the record books and that happened so early in the year. It wouldn't be a huge amount of snow. It would be rain changing to snow for the mid-Atlantic in this whole area. So already, I posted on my Facebook page last night. As much as it's nice to have the model agreement now, which we were seeing last night, great model agreement, it won't last. It's not lasting now. All right, we just lost. We've lost it, and I and I knew we'd lose it because we can never maintain it. All right, as clear cut as the forecast seems this far out, it never is. Take a look at the uh, zero Z GFS ensembles. Pretty much a rain changing to snow type event across the northeast, like GFS operational. When you have the GFS operational backed by the GFS ensemble, that's a good model. And uh, the European. European is the most bullish model at this point. Pretty intense swipe of snow for the East Coast on uh, on the European. All right. 
Once this, well, all right, here we go. Once this first batch clears out, a couple inches for New England. Snowing pretty heavily. I mean, this is impressive stuff. All right. And what it does is, it brings a second coastal low behind it, and it made. Now this would be historic, but I don't think it's going to happen. But it would be historic if this were to happen. We were to saw a low up, uh, move up the coast. It'd be about six to twelve inches for a lot of spots. I don't think that's going to happen. It would be very impressive if it did. Um, basically, what the euro wants to do here is bring a second coastal low developing behind it. All right. I mean, never say never, but it just doesn't look like a great, great deal of happening, great chance of happening. What what the year what the GFS operational does is similar. GFS operational uh, brings that first low, and then here's here's the second low. It's pretty intense, but it stays offshore. Now, will it go onshore? Maybe, maybe, uh, but there's a lot of maybes involved. All right. Well, that's it for now, folks. Uh, thanks for checking in. You gotta stay tuned. There's a lot of stuff we're tracking right now as we get into the snow season.